I came to love through a back door, through what love isn't. A de till death do us part battle raging between my parents. My name flung back and forth, crashing down in the next room as I tried to sleep, each blaming the other for my bad behavior. Couldn't shut out the sound of my father's what it cost him when I got into an accident. My mother's attempt to leave him and failing time and time again that could send me fleeing into the arms of men who promised a road trip adventure kind of Kerouac love. I became the tag-along chick who didn't know then that I might as well have still been in my parents' house when with one lover I lay awake for hours in my studio apartment, afraid to move and disturb him. Eventually, I grew tired of waiting for him to wake up. Another said that he liked imported sardines whose smell sickened me, and I couldn't afford but always had on hand when he moved in after his building collapse. Spent exhausted hours listening to his prediction of future greatness in, I don't remember what, only that he dropped out and kept going on about the existential this or that. There was plenty of grass and pills around, alcohol too with some, and so it goes, the bad boys of a young woman's imagination of what love is. But it took one more, a poet who saw himself as a Marxist revolutionary who frequently ran off to Mexico and South America, leaving me his baggage and verbal love behind, which sent me fleeing through the right door at last. When he returned from one trip with a story of being in a Nicaraguan prison, a journal I'd been accepted in, pub, uh, a journal, uh, journal I'd been published and accepted. When the truth came out, I was accused of being in on it, despite my denials. He asked what I expected him to do about it, vanishing into a flurry of threats from the editors to blacklist me before I could reply. One night, a year or so later, in Grassroots, an East Village bar, I was talking about poetry one moment with a man I just met, the next falling like Alice through the rabbit hole, down a bottomless kiss, as this man my mentor introduced me to for professional reasons, this man I call husband but never married, this man patiently began guiding me back to myself. For 15 years, I never once worried about how I was going to get back up or even wanted to, took his death to part us. <laughs>